Hello, this video is one of the modules on offer as part of the Foundation Online Training Course. Our unique course has helped over 10,000 people to study for their Foundation exam. And the course consists of online lessons, videos like this one, quizzes and mock tests. To access our free course and to get the latest version of this video and our collection of videos, go to www.hamtrain.co.uk. Now, on with the module. Hi, this is Kelly from Essex Ham and welcome to Foundation Online, getting you started with amateur radio. Here's what we'll be looking at in this module. Safety, including mains voltage, batteries, ladders and other hazards. Hello, my name is Pete and I'll be your guide for this module. Safety, it's important to keep ourselves and others safe whilst using amateur radio. In this module, we'll look at power, voltage, earths and batteries, safety around antennas and RF, keeping safe in the shack, using tools and operating outdoors. Voltage and current. It's important to know the dangers that both of these hold. High voltage can carry a risk of electrocution. High current carries a risk of overheating and fire. You should take care with any mains powered equipment. Touching both the live and the neutral can be fatal. You should switch off and unplug equipment before working on it. And if servicing equipment, you should only do so if you are competent to do so and always follow the manufacturer's instructions. Electrocution. If you discover an electrocution victim, you should first disconnect the power immediately. Ensure the power is off before touching the victim, otherwise you could become a victim yourself, and summon medical help. A look at earths. A mains earth connection is there to prevent metalwork becoming live in a fault condition. The voltage will go straight down to earth, so if you accidentally touch the metal case, you won't get a shock. If equipment has a mains earth fitted, the earth must not be disconnected. And you must not mix the mains earth with your radio RF earth. Staying with mains earths, some homes in the UK use different types of mains earth, and for some homes, special care is needed with RF earthing arrangements. The foundation exam doesn't go into detail about these requirements, but for the foundation exam, recall that special care is needed with earthing arrangements and that a competent professional must be consulted before making any modifications. You'll find advice on RF Earths on the RSGB website. A look now at mains plugs. Inside a UK mains plug, there are three colours. The brown is for live, which connects to the fuse. The blue is neutral. And the green yellow is the earth. When wiring a mains plug, you need to make sure that the plug and the cable aren't damaged that the flex is secured correctly, you've got the correct value of fuse, and you should know the correct formula for calculating this. I, the current, is P, the power, over V, the voltage. And you have to avoid whiskers, little bits of metal coming out from the connectors that could touch other connectors. A look at fuses. A fuse is a safety device that contains a thin wire that will melt when there's excessive current, thus breaking the circuit. Fuses must be fitted in accordance with the manufacturer's instruction, and of course, you must use the correct value. If a fuse blows, you should investigate the cause properly. Now, RCBO. This stands for Residual Current Circuit Breaker with Overcurrent Protection. These provide better protection against electric shock over a standard fuse. An RCBO will detect currents to earth of around 30 milliamps, 
whereas a fuse will only blow at several amps and only where the fault is a short circuit, such as live to neutral or live to earth. Moving away from mains to batteries. If you are using batteries, take care with them and avoid short circuits. Even a low voltage battery can overheat and potentially cause a fire. Some batteries supply very high currents, which can be hazardous if short circuited. Different battery technologies require different charging techniques and you must always use the correct type of charger on rechargeable batteries. Battery charging must always be done in accordance with manufacturer instructions. You should be particularly careful with lithium batteries as they can cause fire and explode if not treated properly. And many types of batteries require special handling as some contain corrosive chemicals. Moving on now to shack safety. If you've got an amateur radio shack at home, you need to make sure that your shack has a single, clearly marked master off switch and tell everyone in the family whereabouts this is. You should also take care when using headphones. Loud noises are not uncommon with amateur radio if you set the volume too high by accident and a loud noise can damage your hearing. The damage can be cumulative, building over time. Also watch out for trailing wires as these are a trip hazard. And watch out for frayed insulation on cables. It's also a sensible idea not to have your tea and coffee near mains voltage equipment. A word about tool safety. Eye protection must be worn when using tools. This prevents damage to your eyes from things like small metal particles known as swarf from getting into your eyes. All tools, including power tools, can be dangerous and should be handled and stored with care and appropriate precautions. If you're doing any soldering, you need to be safe. Eye protection must be worn when soldering to prevent solder or flux from getting into your eyes. You must use a soldering iron stand to avoid coming into contact with the hot part of a soldering iron when it's not in use. Soldering workstations must be well ventilated to avoid inhalation of solder fumes, which can cause breathing problems, particularly to asthmatics. Next, working at height and with ladders. If you're using a ladder, secure it to make sure it doesn't slip. Never overreach when you're up a ladder. And remember the correct ratio. Four up to one across gives you the safe angle to position your ladder. At least one adult should be present to help. You should use a tool belt and be careful not to drop items on anyone below. Hard hats should be worn while working at height or when others are working at height above you. Moving on to antenna safety. Antennas and the feeders that feed the antenna must be located and secured safely. When erecting an antenna, you should always be careful of overhead cables and phone lines. There is a risk of lethal shock if antennas, ladders or feeder comes into contact with or can attract arcing from mains power lines. Also be aware of the risk of a lightning strike on high antennas. Special protection may be needed and your local authority can offer advice on lightning protection. Moving on now to RF radio safety. Exposure to RF, radio frequency radiation, can be dangerous. It can heat body tissue and the eyes are particularly susceptible to damage. You can get advice on safe RF radiation levels from Public Health England or the ICNIRP. Often in professional radio environments, you'll find waveguides. These are devices that focus radio waves, typically at microwave frequencies. Looking down a waveguide, 
or standing too close to a high gain antenna while it's in use can be very dangerous, again especially to the eyes. There is also the danger of RF burns. These can be quite nasty and you don't always feel the effect straight away. You should not touch an antenna or the conductors whilst the antenna is transmitting. Antennas should be positioned in a way so that no one can accidentally come into contact with them. And even insulated wires such as antenna or feeder cable can still give you an RF burn. You should also be careful while wearing watches, rings or anything metal around RF. Next, car safety. Many people advise against using amateur radio whilst driving for the following reasons. It is a distraction, possibly resulting in a lack of attention. Unsecured equipment can cause damage if the vehicle stops suddenly. And of course taking your hands away from the vehicle controls to adjust radio equipment or to transmit is dangerous. What about operating outdoors? If you're operating at a temporary premises or at an outdoor location such as a field day there are some other hazards to watch out for. If connecting to the mains, again be careful. Watch out for trailing cables and also damp ground. Water and electricity don't mix. Extra safety precautions should be taken. Assess the risks. Route cables carefully. Think protection. That's lightning, correct fusing, RCBOs etc. Also signage to make it clear that there may be trip hazards or overhead wires. If unsure, seek advice. In general, remember that safety is everyone's responsibility. It's important for you in your own shack, family and visitors. And at club events or on field days, again it's important to make sure everyone is safe. You should stay alert to any potentially unsafe circumstance, warn others and report the matter to the appropriate person. A lot of safety is common sense but it's very very important to be aware of the risks. In summary, understand the dangers of high voltage and current. Do not touch a casualty until the power is disconnected. Understand about mains plugs, fuses and earth. Understand the dangers of RF burns. Take care with ladders and antennas. Make sure you, your family and visitors are safe and have a clearly marked off switch at home. Watch out for wires that are a trip hazard. And be aware of the risks when operating outdoors. And that's it for this safety module. Thanks for watching this latest module of our Foundation Online course. We hope you found it useful. If you're looking for some more help with your studies, we do recommend the Foundation Study Guide, available from Amazon in Kindle or paperback format. Thanks for watching again and best of luck with your studies. As a reminder, this video is part of the free Foundation online course. If you're studying for Foundation, sign up and get access to all of the course material, including slides, lessons, handouts, videos, quizzes and our mocks. You can sign up at www.hamtrain.co.uk. Thank you.